Roads are a crucial part of human daily lives. We depend on roads for dwelling, traveling, socializing, extracting, and transporting goods, and as such, they serve as the most vivid form of entanglements of human and more than human assemblages. Very rarely the existence of roads is questioned, and in the instances in which they are, the roads are usually located in remote regions such as the Siberian taiga. Here the environmentalists call for roadless areas to conserve biodiversity while disregarding the mobility needs of local and indigenous communities as well as the extractive interests of various industries. The project Informal Roads, the impact of unofficial transportation routes on remote Arctic communities funded by the National Science Foundation is a detailed interdisciplinary study of the overall impact informal roads have on the Arctic environment and economic, social, and cultural well-being of local and indigenous communities. Our multimedia presentation aims to go beyond reconstruction of particular roadscapes and explores the relationships between humans and non-humans entangled in these assemblages. Our area of interest is located north of the Baikal region in Russia. This area is known for its wealth of natural resources. Existing transportation infrastructure serves the needs of delivering extracted resources to market. Historically, rivers served as the main routes for fur extracted from the taiga to European merchants. The main transportation route was laid in the 18th century along the Lena River. The construction of the baikal Amur Railroad in the 1970s was the next impetus for urban population growth, geologic exploration, and forestry development in the region. With the construction of the East Siberia Pacific Ocean Oil Pipeline in 2006, oil company operations proliferated in the area. Infrastructure development in the region has continued as the strength of Siberia gas pipeline is constructed. Despite all this infrastructure development, the Viloy Winter Road remains the only federally maintained transportation corridor in the study area. Scarce regional roads connect settlements with the Irkutsk region, the city of Irkutsk, and the Republic of Buryatia. Very few sections of road in the study region are paved. In the summer of 2021, social and physical scientists and artists traveled together to the study area. The team arrived using formal and informal roads, including public and private forestry roads, seismic line cleared corridors, subsistence trails, and oil company roads with their permission. Also, the team traveled along and crossed rivers by boat, the traditional way of transportation for local and indigenous communities during the summertime. The expedition inevitably traversed the landscapes on foot and met with members of the communities. During the expedition, the team cataloged landscape features, performed permafrost measurements, mapped landscapes and infrastructure, and created audio, photo, and video documentation. The team also conducted interviews with local residents, traveling along these specific roadscapes to better understand the environments in which local and indigenous communities live, relying on their long-term observations and gather their concerns. We attempt to relate and immerse ourselves in these environments through scientific, artistic, local, and indigenous lived experiences. Such work requires collaborative efforts to formulate questions, analyze available public data and images, and finally organize the expedition. Traveling by informal roads, the team had a chance to see transitions between taiga and peatlands, valleys and mountains, and natural and anthropogenic landscapes. For indigenous people, these landscapes are rich environments full of history and culture. For local communities, the diversity of natural landscapes provides a variety of subsistence resources, including different species of game, fish, berries, herbs, wood, and so on. For tourists, these secluded places are a refuge from urban crowds. From a global community perspective, these natural landscapes serve as carbon storage pools that can mitigate climate change. However, the availability of extractive resources is the major reason why these landscapes are increasingly exploited and transformed. Humans both intentionally and unintentionally modify landscapes, which manifests in diverse ways in the remote taiga. Roads, logging sites, bridges, camps for migratory laborers, pipelines, and other forms of human activities together form anthropogenic landscapes. 
Roads in this case serve as the main element of the anthropogenic landscape and in our study area demonstrate the constant rate of growth related to extractive industrial development. After the expedition, the geographers extracted quantitative, standardized data and combined it with remote sensing imagery and other open source information. Meanwhile, artists used the team's work as inspiration. We can say they applied remote sensing as well, immersing themselves in a specific atmosphere created by visual, sensory, and audio means. The Yeraktinska oil and gas field, located between Tokma and Ustkut, is one of the first explored in the areas, discovered in 1971. However, exploration only started in 2008 to 2009 and expanded to include the Ichadinska oil and gas field in 2012. Informal roads are an inevitable component of extractive industrial development. Usually, these roads either do not have any surfacing or are covered by gravel extracted nearby. Removal of the upper layer of soil reveals sediments that have been accumulated in the area for hundreds of millions of years, dating back to the Ordovician geological period of the Paleozoic era. Rocks grinded by heavy vehicles into a red dust coat surrounding surfaces and bring both physical and chemical changes to the environment. Red colored rocks tell the story of the once shallow warm sea that gave life to abundant marine wildlife. Their fossilized remnants in the form of oil and gas drive the current extractive industrial development in the region.
In the summer of 2021, this dust was combined with smoke from wildfires in the neighboring Republic of Sakha, Yakutia. Both dust and wildfires are examples of human-caused disturbances. When they are combined, the visual image reminds us about the risk of turning Earth into a planet as uninhabitable as Mars. Tokma is a village founded by Russian hunters in 1802. The name Tokma has an Evenk origin and means a place with many moose. Hunting moose and other animals has been an important part of subsistence for both indigenous Evenk and the first Russian settlers. The settlement served as the first state training post in the area due to its location at the intersection of the river routes and winter roads. With the development of motorized vehicles that depend on good quality roads, the village, like many others in the taiga and tundra, became remote. The village has a shrinking population, which is today only about 50 people. Currently, Tokma can only be accessed using a singular winter road or by helicopter. To reach Tokma, the expedition team used three modes of transportation, driving 15 kilometers by off-road vehicle, two kilometers on foot, and finally crossing a river by boat. It is challenging to get out of here. During winter, a helicopter comes twice a month. It is about three times a month in summer. But it is hard to get on a helicopter during summer, since many locals travel during the summer months. Well, it is better during winter, since we have an operational zim. You do not have to wait for the helicopter, just take the all-terrain vehicle. Now summer, on the other hand, only by air. The commuter copter flights are weather dependent, it does not fly in low visibility. Residents of the small Taiga village of Tokma learned about the proximity of forest fires from thick and acrid smoke and the ash that covered all surfaces, including snow. The rate of combustion is high during an intense fire. Therefore, leaves, needles, and other light particles burn out instantly, preserving the fragile shape of the burnt organic matter. These remains rise up with hot air streams and are carried away by the wind. The locals determined what type of vegetation was burning by the shape of the remains, the ashes in the form of needles, dwarf birch leaves, etc. The residents' knowledge of the vegetation and the woods helped to roughly identify the fire's distance. We have not had this much smoke in the last 45 years. When we ran last time, it was wild and scary. The entire forest was on fire. It was hard to breathe, and chunks of ash were falling from the sky. Wildfires in the Arctic and Siberian taiga have become a hot topic in recent years in both scientific and media circles as larger areas are being affected and are burning longer. During our fieldwork, residents attributed the increases in wildfires to the expansion of the informal road network. Most of the fires start from human presence on roads. At the same time, hunters pointed out the fact that the roads also serve as barriers for low-intensity fires. The expedition team observed this firsthand when a fire was stopped by the clearing made by the road. For hunters, wildfires became an important point of concern as it threatens their subsistence infrastructure such as hunting cabins, traps, and natural resources.
We combined community observations and satellite imagery to understand relationships between the location, extent, and timing of wildfires, as well as how frequently they occurred and how quickly they were extinguished based on the industries that use them. The data was analyzed employing the Fire Radiative Power FRP Index on MODIS and VIRS imagery to determine the intensity of fires at different locations. Using medium and high-resolution satellite imagery, Landsat, Sentinel, and Digital Globe, the boundaries of wildfires were identified. We found correlations between the wildfire ignition points and roads. Roads also play an important role in wildfire suppression, working as both physical barriers and as an access point for firefighter crews. While remotely sensed satellite images detect the location and intensity of thermal anomalies, artistic perspective offers a creative reinterpretation of wildfires. For artist Zosia Lutina, these flows are similar to liquid paint freely spreading over damp batik and are stopped only by reserve. In her work, she uses a cold batik technique. The expansion of informal road networks exacerbates permafrost degradation. In interviews conducted by the expedition team, local and indigenous people noted falling trees, ravines, and disruptions of landscapes related to development and use of informal roads. Permafrost processes, such as ice wedging and frost heaves, can further complicate the development and use of informal roads. Multiple tracks are often the signs of roads over permafrost. This installation is an illustration of human routes, which not only change the structure of the surface, but penetrate deep into the depths of the earth. I chose transparent materials, and it's as if I'm looking at the light, layer by layer how the colors change. Blue, azure, amethyst remind me about cold, winter, transparency, and brittleness. Gray, blue, emerald, another palette, ochre, orange, fuchsia, evokes penetrating, melting, and changing heat. Folding fragment after fragment, I collect them into a kind of mosaic, the rhythm of which is dictated by the geometry of the natural relief. As if in a kaleidoscope, each element is dependent on the others. One slight movement changes the whole picture. Color spots, superimposed on each other, form a mosaic just like rocks. Areas of frozen soil and underground ice compose a unique ensemble in each place. This installation by Zosia Lutina was inspired by indigenous spiritual practices and the beliefs and concerns about the catastrophic impact of wildfires in the Siberian taiga. Beyond being a natural disaster for Evenki, wildfires serve as a keeper of the hearth. The spirit of fire named Tov Miyoni Ikendu interacts with other spirits living in the forest. Naturally, the forest burns from time to time to revitalize itself. Human-caused fires, growing in number and intensity, disrupt these natural cycles. Indigenous people believe that the large, individually standing trees serve as dwellings for the mightiest forest spirits. As locals and indigenous people pass these trees, they tie ribbons as a sign of respect to forest spirits. It is believed that, once honored, these trees are able to withstand wildfires and protect the surrounding environment.
During the expedition, the team saw landscapes slowly recovering from wildfires and other disturbances. Fireweed is typically the first thing that grows and burns scars in other disturbed areas. Later on, they will be replaced by shrubs that in turn are succeeded by deciduous and then by coniferous trees. The latter can support the regrowth of lichen, which is expected to return in about half a century if not accounting for the interference of climate change. The team's research emphasizes care, respect, and harmony in relation with other living beings by recognizing and reconciling different ways of understanding. Altogether, it allows humanity and the earth to support native species and as a result, support itself.